Hey everybody, welcome back to the Utah Outcast, a show that attempts to tackle reality with a little bit of humor and uh, share some of what it's like living in America's foremost theocratic state. And the reason I'm saying that is because the topic we're getting to today is going to talk about a big chunk of the business and religious area of the, of, of the town that we, me and Kyle call home. So we're, we'll get to them here in a minute. But anyway, uh, this is episode number 396, and we're glad to have you along for the ride. Like I said, uh, my name is X, and joining me once again this week is Kyle. Welcome to you guys. How's it going out there? Uh, you can find us on Twitch every Saturday at 8 p.m.-ish Mountain Time, because today we started a little bit late, but it's we still did a full hour. God damn it. And then you can also find us on YouTube, uh, Utah Outcasts Official. So anyway, uh, anything been going on with you this week, Kyle? Anything fun? Anything I mean, interesting? Nothing terribly interesting. Didn't murder anybody? Or, I, no, good? No, no. <laughs> not, that, not that I would say on a podcast. Is it, is it, you're a cop, you got to tell me if you're a cop. That's the way it works. <laughs> Somebody said that this week, and I was like, <laughs> no, they don't. What the fuck are you talking about? Like, they absolutely don't. <laughs> they don't. Are you kidding? Like, you know, cops have the legal ability to lie to you. <laughs> it, it's been proven in the Supreme Court that they can lie to get whatever end that they like, you know? If it's a confession saying, oh, we'll just right. let you out of here if you just confess to this. They're not going to let you out of there, man. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't really, uh, nothing, nothing really terribly. I don't, I don't get terribly interesting things happening uh, mm. to me on a regular basis. I, I wake up, I work, I go to sleep. I wake up, I work, I go to sleep. Yeah. It's kind of a horrible, like between, between the, <laughs> the between the periods of, of working and sleeping is, is trying desperately to, to to raise kids that are far too much like like me. Oh, <laughs> oh my god, it's exhausting. <laughs> yeah, but, I've got some that are having definite traits of me. Some have definite traits of my wife. Yeah, and then one's like this nice mixture in between. And mm -hmm. I'm like, there's going to be your well-rounded kid. You know, the other ones right. are going to have the same. Fucking right. problems that I've got, or right. my wife has. As, so. Like I'm, I'm generally speaking, I am of the opinion that when kids are born and they're in that little, that little like nursery room mm -hmm. in the hospital where they're doing all the checkups and everything, they should shuffle those kids around. Like nobody should ever have to raise your own kid. Like Watch that's an anime it. like that. <laughs> nobody should have to raise a kid that shares the traits of the parent because that is the literal worst how you don't know how to deal with yourself are you kidding <laughs> no. nobody knows how to deal with nobody and the thing, understands the thing we all yourself. hate the most is when someone holds a mirror <laughs> up <laughs> no shit <laughs> and there's nothing there's nothing a kid hates more than when they're like yelling at their parent that you don't understand me and this <laughs> stupid fucking parent is sitting there going bullshit i absolutely understand i am you, you. <laughs> we are the same basic person uh, with minor variations of course i fucking understand you it's wild how much my youngest is exactly like me <laughs> like, like there was a point there was a point not too long ago that we i had to Drag my son in between between me and my wife. We had to say, "Look, you understand this. You are fifty percent me and fifty percent your mom." <laughs> between the two of us, we understand everything going on in your head, and we understand that you are a terrible liar <laughs> <laughs> to us. We know every time you lie. We know everything you do. Like, do you ever wonder how it is we can catch you doing shit and you have no idea how we could have possibly known that you would go do the stupid thing that you did? Because we fucking know. We, we did that are. ourselves. <laughs> like, we look at things around and we go, yep, we, uh, I bet, uh, like there, there are plenty of times we have set things up in the house, <laughs> looked at the setup and gone, yeah, he's going to fuck with this. <laughs> Yeah. And we've taken bets between each other between about how long it's going to take. Like, <laughs> we'll, we'll go grocery shopping and get, like, a box of cereal and say, hey, let's hide this in the pantry. 
<laughs> like, like literally, well, because that's it. what you have to do. We Fuck you, people that it. don't have kids don't understand this. We'll, if you want a food all to yourself as an adult, <laughs> you have to. Hide you it. have to hide right, it, right. Like, or it yeah. has to be something that you know they won't fucking touch. Right? You know, like so. We're we're gonna hide this. We're gonna we're gonna fucking hide the Fruit Loops, man. <laughs> Are they the Fruit Loops with marshmallow or just regular ass Fruit Loops? Technically, the multi meals tutti fruits. Oh uh, well, that's yeah. the, that's fucking good anyway. It's the same thing. It's, it's the same, same goddamn fucking, food. I same don't... fucking thing. You get more for the same. Hey, money. hey, for all you people that are like brand loyalists for all this shit, guess what? The Kroger brand tastes exactly like the other shit. Bullshit. You know? The Kroger brand is shit. <laughs> like not on everything. I was gonna but say in this case, like. But then again, you're talking to a guy who's happy with raisin bran. You know, <laughs> yeah. no matter what form it comes raisin, in. Raisin so. bran, raisin bran. Is good. But it's we, fantastic. We we will. We will hey, we if will, you're an, if you're a fucking adult and you're like, I've never tried raisin bran because ugh, it looks like an old person cereal. Try it. It's fucking delightful. <laughs> it is. If you like raisins, there are plenty of people that just can't. Oh yeah, there's people that don't like really fucking raisins, and I don't blame them for that. You know, I can't really blame them. There are people who like don't like onions. Huh. Yeah, me <laughs> <laughs> or mayo. <laughs> Yeah, that's that one's that one's understandable. I can't fault anybody for for dislike. Hey, but all of mine are fucking psychological reasons, you know. <laughs> Not for like me me being a gourmand, I should love all this shit because I know what it is. I know what flavors it adds to all this yeah. stuff is. But having an abusive childhood has made it so it's like there's a mental thing with eating that oh, shit absolutely. nowadays. So uh, it's uh, yeah. But we, we'll, Someone could say like, "Hey, I made you a grilled cheese sandwich," and it was, and they don't say anything until you eat the whole thing. And you're like, mm, "Good, thanks for the great grilled cheese sandwich." And be like, "It was made with mayo." I will punch somebody, you know, not because I was tricked or anything like that, but because you made me fucking eat mayonnaise. <laughs> yep. Yep. I got no reason to not like the shit except for the fact that, thanks, Dad. Though <laughs> <laughs> so it was really funny. So, um. Don't mean to wrap it into my thing, but I want to talk about. The, I went up to the uh, the family thing this past weekend. Oh, yeah. And I th yeah. I thought it was, it was yeah, going yeah, to be yeah. a shit show. It was going to be a real shit show. For one, I finally decided. You know what? I'm going to tell them we're not bringing fishing poles because I don't want to go fucking fishing up there because there's no good place to sit. It was at East Canyon is where we went to, which is up. Yeah, it's yeah, up there. no, no, I know it well. But unless you have a boat, there ain't no really good place to go fishing out there. <laughs> Especially not now. No, yeah, with the water level being like 10 feet lower than it's ever been. Yeah. Oh, it was fucking horrible. But I said, we're not doing that. So I went up there. And first of all, I get there and I'm like, first, first thing I see is my dad is fucking drunk. <laughs> no, I'm like, okay, this is going to be a lot easier to get along with then. I'm going to be able to talk as much shit as I want to and he won't remember any of this. So, <laughs> And his wife was tipsy as well. So, yeah. And he, yeah. Kept, he kept doing the same stupid fucking shit that he did with me as a kid that drove me insane. Which is his, all right, if you could tell me who this is when he's playing music on his whatever radio it is. It's like, what band is this? Like, my whole life growing up was, who's this? What band is this? What song is this? You know? And it, so it was the point where I like, got fucking drilled into my head where I'm like, yeah, I'm not going to do this with my kids. And he kept doing it with my kids. And they're just like, Grandpa, we don't fucking know. <laughs> we don't know who this band is. <laughs> oh, it's Three Dog Night. You don't know Three Dog Night? I'm like, no, Dad, they don't know who fucking Three Dog Night is. Are you getting, Are you going to give them a hard, a hard time for not knowing who Dr. Hook and the Traveling Medicine Show is, too? Are you going to get <laughs> mad about them not knowing who Captain Beefheart is? Fuck you, man. <laughs> Yes, I'm, I am naming actual bands, guys. Just yes. letting you know. Yes, they are. And yes. then he, he turns to me and he's like, well, it's not like you ever listened to King Crimson or anything. I'm like, motherfucker, I know all the King Crimson shit. I listen to prog rock. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I'm like, I like Emerson, Lake, and Palmer. And one of the guys was from fucking King Crimson. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> and now that I'm like, I'm starting to settle into my older age of being 42 and realizing, like, yeah. fuck, I'm just about to be around the hill, you know, mm -hmm. just over the hill. I, <laughs> he was talking about something about growing up because, hey, my, hey, guys, my mom's still in a cult. <laughs> and just letting you know, that's still going on. Yeah. And it's still weird because I have to talk to my dad about this shit. And since he was so drunk, I had to repeat to myself at least five times in different conversations <laughs> that we were having about this whole thing. And he, um, he starts talking about how uh, we had to send you to go live with your grandparents at this time because I didn't trust your mom to raise you with this. And I'm like, gee, fucking thanks for the traumatic childhood, dad. I really said this to him. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, oh, yeah, we were having troubles way back then, too. And I'm like, yeah. And you wondered why I was never around the fucking house all the time back then. Like, because I used to be like, 
at the park, hanging out at my friends' houses, only coming home for dinner and bedtime, you know, and except for when it hit the weekends, then I'd be out of the fucking house as much mm -hmm. as I could, having sleepovers wherever I could, because I, I didn't get along with my family really well, guys. I just wanted to be away from them as much as I possibly could. <laughs> oh, shit. That reminds me. And so I pointed this out to him. I'm like, and I literally said to him, and you wonder why I wasn't home th that often back then. <laughs> and he's like, what? Like, they, it cut through the booze, mm -hmm. and he finally fucking realized, man, I kind of fucked up at that time <laughs> in my life. Uh, so, it, it was it was interesting, and we had food, and we drove back down the fucking canyon and came back home. It was no mm -hmm. big deal. I thought it was going to be a lot worse, because it's just awkward as fuck being in a hostage situation <laughs> where you're in the middle of fucking nowhere having to hang out with people that don't hang out with you often enough. And so it, it was weird, but yeah, what am I going to do? So, yeah, that, that, that does, that, that does remind me. I got to, I got to, I got to, to check a, a parental milestone off, uh, this past, this past week. Oh yeah. My, my oldest, my oldest child, <clears throat> uh, sent, uh, a text. They were, they were at marching band practice. Right. And they sent a text, stay at the car, because, like, Cause they're that fucking age. drive yourself, right. man. <laughs> like, I don't need to go, we don't need to go anywhere. I don't um, need to sit in the parking lot waiting for you to do your shit right, anymore. So, right. <laughs> go take the car, go to band, go to your band practice. And yeah, they sent a text, like, hey, we're just finishing up. Um, one of my friends is having a birthday party. Can I go? <laughs> I've been waiting. I have been waiting and waiting. <laughs> yes, you can. Make good decisions. <laughs> That's kind of like something I say to my kids. No every... drugs. <laughs> Unless they're good drugs and then just a few. <laughs> <laughs> and call us if you need a ride. Be responsible. You know what? <laughs> just you know what them. makes kids? Laying all of them out there until they're like, okay. Okay, Dad. <laughs> like, no, seriously, just go have fun. Just and, be responsible. Let me know if you're drinking. Like, you know, go have fun. Like, I don't care. Like, what you do because you're a kid. And it's your own fucking life. You like, know. <laughs> if if you if you wind up not being able to drive yourself home for any reason, we don't mm -hmm. care. Just call. Yeah. Like, we, we, we literally do not <laughs> care why. <laughs> Otherwise. Be safe. Now, were you the were you the kind of parent? Sorry, this is parenting chat with Kyle and X because this is what <laughs> our lives are these days. Um, were you the kind to let your kids sneak sneak sips off of your stuff because they're they're just interested in what it tastes like? You know, are you a cop? <laughs> no, no. See, that's why I said stuff, not <laughs> not exactly what it was. You know, I could be talking about Pepsi or orange juice for all you fucking know. Um, yes, yeah, same here because until. <laughs> Until one admitted they liked it a lot. <laughs> oh, wait, no, I know this story. You told this one before. Yep. I, no, no need to go any further. Yeah. <laughs> that's when the lock got installed. <laughs> that's, that's when, that's when it stopped being stored in the fridge. <laughs> right. <laughs> or the cabinet. <laughs> okay. That's a real that fucking is... bummer. I want to go get some hard stuff tomorrow, and just there ain't no place yeah, to get I know. it, man. It's... Well, I mean, nowhere. I mean, local. I like unless you, yeah, unless you want to drive uh, an hour, an hour in one direction, or two hours in the other. Yeah, it's or just, like it's... you know, an hour and a half in in the other direction, <laughs> or six in the other. <laughs> like we have four directions we can go. Right. Four directions we can go, and and the state wonders why it loses tax revenue. So I, my, my youngest, that's exactly like me. I let her sneak sip, sips of things sometimes. Mm -hmm. And there's sometimes where she's just like, oh, that's really good. And I'm like, fuck, this backfired on me. <laughs> because I remember my old man letting me have a sip of one of his uh, beers one time. And I'm like, ugh, who could drink that? Keep in mind, this was old Milwaukee's best. So yeah, that's, that's, um, there, there's a good reason why that tastes like shit. You know? <laughs> and it still does. It still does, guys. So, oh man. Okay, we do have a show to get to, so let's go ahead and get to it. Before we uh, get to it proper, let's thank the newest patron of our show, who is, uh, I'm not going to read your entire name because you gave me the serial killer name, 
which is when you give somebody gives you their full proper name, like all three of them. And I'm like, eh, you don't need all that out there. So I'm just going to go ahead and say thanks to thanks to Jeff for being the newest patron of the show. And uh, let me uh, go ahead and give you. Um, uh, so how about this one? I'm going to get up right now. And I'm going to cut my penis off. No, that one doesn't quite fit, does it? I mean, let's see. Um, how about this one? Up yours, woke moralist. There you go. That's good. We'll see who cancels who. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you so much for your uh, your patron donation. So that it really does keep the show afloat, and it really does help out. So thank you so much. Um, if you want to count yourselves among the patrons that we honor each week, feel free to join us at patreon.com slash Utah Outcasts for at least a buck a month. And we do a lot, <laughs> guys. I, we do a lot for a dollar. <laughs> for a dollar, man. <laughs> I mean, you don't get you don't get the, the like right. the full five hour session uncut episodes, but there's some people, and I'm talking specifically to my my peeps out there that are listening that are uncut patrons, and most of you people are not long haul over the road truck drivers, guys. So you don't need friends to hang out with you for six hours every week to 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 make the time go by. You, but but you but you can but you can have. Yeah, you can have you can have that. <laughs> we can be we can be your friends. we can be your friends. It'll be, it's a nice parasocial relationship we got here. I think we're a lot more right. responsive to people I think, than I think what, most shows are. Right. I think I think what we really really want to say to those people is thank you for being our friends. Traveling down that road and back again. <laughs> your heart is true. Mm. You're a pal and a confidant. <laughs> and if you threw a party. <laughs> invited everyone that you knew you would see that the biggest gift would be from me and the card attached would say thank you for being a friend i am so glad you picked that ball up and ran with it i am i am it, it, <laughs> i love the golden girl so please, much <laughs> it pleases me it pleases me so much that i could that i could toss that that up and you, you just ran with it. <laughs> There's so many times I do that with my wife, <laughs> where I just lob the most softball fucking thing I possibly can in her direction. I'm like, here's your chance to give your husband a compliment. And it just fucking falls flat. Like, she just <laughs> looks at it. I'm like, she's like, what was that? <laughs> she's like, that was your chance to be sexy for a second. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, I got three kids. I don't have time to be sexy. <laughs> No, I love you. You know honey. what happened last time? <laughs> yeah, last time a bank shot into the twins, man. That's right. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's the end. Well, they That's took the melon the... ball out of her, so I mean, ooh, no, they did. They, well, never mind. I'm not going to give all yeah. that shit. But it's just one of those things where it would be it would be hard pressed for it to happen, you know. But not saying yeah. it's impossible. But yeah, I also still, as a married man of twenty something years, I still use protection because one, nobody wants to sleep on that. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me I'm wrong. <laughs> I'm <sighs> God damn it. I wash a lot of sheets. That's all <laughs> I'm gonna say. I, just... I have I have multiple pairs of sheets for for a reason. See look, they gave their whole it's like it's a serial killer yeah. name. <laughs> it's, okay, so people that don't get the joke. If, yeah. if serial killers usually go by three names, like uh, Lee Harvey Oswald. Not serial well, killers, but serial murderers. Serial killers, you know. assassins. Assassins, you know. Uh, George, cult leaders. Uh, with the James Earl Ray is another one I'm thinking of. Yeah. i got to think of... Uh, um, shit, some of the serial killers only go by two names, though. So. Never mind. D who cares? Doesn't matter. Anyway, what we got for you guys today for an, for an episode that we're going to be talking about is we're going over the Kingston clan. The Kingstons are a very influential uh, LDS sect split off of the, the traditional Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. So uh, this comes from an article that I grabbed from uh, hate, Fighting Hate. On, it was the intelligence report on the Southern Poverty Law Center. And it's a Every bit of this, like Kyle, Kyle can see what I'm yeah. looking at here. Like I have highlighted most of this because I went through and I'm like, there's not anything in here that doesn't warrant being talked about. Mm -hmm. And so to, to fill you guys in, uh, Utah's polygamous uh, Kingston clan mixes incest and white supremacy with old fashioned capitalism. 
Yep. And in this state, they um, they have withholdings of like over a billion dollars. Let me let me just go into. I, I did the. Uh, the Wikipedia on these guys. So, mm -hmm. uh, the Latter Day Church of Christ, which is what they call themselves, is their official name, but mm -hmm. everybody knows them as the Kingstons, even though it's multiple families, but that's the ones who started it, is based on a belief in Jesus Christ and the restoration of his gospel in these latter days. It is not affiliated with a mainstream LDS church. Doctrinally, members of the L <laughs> LDCJC, I hate calling it that. Try to he, try to adhere to the teachings of the Bible, the Book of Mormon, the Doctrine and Covenants, and the Pearl of Great Price. Just makes me question: What version <laughs> of all those books are you talking about here? Yeah. So, members of this group are also members of the Davis County Cooperative Society, mm -hmm. which it's a big enough county. I can say that both of us live firmly in this county. <laughs> Kyle and I don't live anywhere near each other. <laughs> this is a big fucking county, guys. Yeah. It, it stretches is. all the way from, like, ooh, I want to say Sunset is one of the cities, the northest part of it you're going to reach, which is clear, basically Clearfield Light. And it stretches all the way down to, like, North Salt Lake. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a good 20-mile stretch of county that we've got a whole bunch of cities in between. So. Yeah. <sighs> And a whole bunch of them east and west too. It's it's a big fucking chunk. So uh let's see, what was I talking about there? Um which practices the law of consecration and united order. Some members had begun the practice of plural marriage years before the establishment of the cooperative. During the first years of the Davis County Co op Society, Eldon Kingston and his followers wore unique blue denim garments that led to people to referring them as blue coats. This is in the eighteen. I want to say they, they were. It was a lot. That was that was a while ago. That was that was quite a while ago. Yeah. So let me let me just go ahead and start reading the uh, article here. It says that when it comes to Sunday school lessons, the polygamous Kingston clan could teach the KKK a thing or two. During a recent interview with the Intelligence Report, where we got this uh, uh, issue from, it says Jessica Kingston, a former member of the secretive LD, uh, Salt Lake County, sorry, Salt Lake City based cult. No, it's Davis County, so they're, I mean, they are in Salt Lake City, because most of their businesses yeah. we'll be talking about in a bit are based in, like, West Valley City, which is where they're, poverty is, you know, in this they're, state. They're they're spread out. Yeah. They're, they're actually spread out quite a bit. Uh, remembered when she was 12 that her Sunday school teacher came into class with a bucket of water and a vial of black food coloring. The teacher added the drop of dye to the water, and the children watched as the blackness slowly spread, and the teacher was like, you can never get that out. That's always there now, said Jessica, who's now 29. She talked about how you can't associate with black people or anybody of a different race. So the case the clan should give you right off the bat there is that they are a very, very racist organization, and we haven't even begun to scratch the surface of these people yet, because that's, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they. It's not only that. It, there is. There's incest. <laughs> a lot of it, guys. Yeah. It, we're talking about a shallow gene pool. Mm -hmm. So we're going to get to that in a minute. Um, based on available evidence, including the accounts of numerous former order members, the SPLC has designated the order as a hate group under the category of general hate. The racist display was no one-off, as Jessica said. She and her other children of the Kingston clan a group also known as the Order, the Davis County Cooperative Society, and the Latter-day Church of Christ drop the N-bomb all the time. Mm -hmm. And so do their parents. Black people, according to the LDS Church, supposedly suffered from multi multiple scriptural curses from the Mark of Cain from Noah's time, because Noah cursed Ham in the, in the old Bible, Right yeah. to the racist tenets of early Mormonism, mm -hmm. where you know their skin was made darkened to reveal how they were on the inside because they fought against God in the pre-existence kind of thing. Oh my God! Yeah, I, they I talk really, about they really haven't gotten over. They really well. I they can't, try. <laughs> I can't. I can't really. I can't really speak to like today. Yeah, but I know. I know. Growing up with this in the the eighties and. Partially, you know, early nineties. Yeah, they really hadn't gotten away from it. Nope. Like there was sort of a yeah, but that's not really a thing. We still, the like nothing <laughs> fundamentally changed, but they were. It was like 
it was like adding just kidding <laughs> to to a racist joke. Right. Even though they totally meant that goddamn thing that they right. just said, but the just kidding gives them the right. cover to but get every, out of it. But so. all everything else, everything else was still very, very prevalent. So Jessica said that black blood, as she called it, was the worst thing that you can have. She said, particularly since the Kingstons consider themselves to be the whitest of the white, descended directly from Jesus Christ and King David, the Middle Eastern origins of both men, notwithstanding, as the article points out here, which is fucking solid dig, man. Yep. <laughs> which when I was reading this, and I'm like, thankfully, the author got to it. But I was like, Jesus Christ and King David were not yep. born as white people. What the fuck, man? <laughs> yep. Oh my god. The the LDS people and their fucking whitewashed Jesus that they have. Like th we're only a couple of generations away from them making him blonde-haired and blue-eyed, you know. <laughs> we're we're this we're this close fingers apart just a bit. I'm surprised no but I'm surprised they're I'm, I'm waiting to see Aryan people... Jesus, man. That's what I'm waiting to see. I... <laughs> I'm surprised more people aren't upset cuz they they do the they do the the redhead. They do the ginger Jesus. Yeah. They do the ginger Jesus, and I'm not sure why nobody's like, one, uh, that's, <laughs> ain't no gingers in Jerusalem. Nope. That, that person would have had a hard thing. time living there, man. It's, that is not a thing. That is, that is not, that is not a thing that you would see. I mean, I suppose, technically, sure, it's a possible genetic <laughs> thing that could happen, but. Right. That doesn't, not really, probably. So, being with them being obsessed about the purity of their bloodlines, the Kingstons have made incest the cornerstone of a self-serving theology that loathes non-whites, fosters homophobia, and abhors government authority. Ex-Order members tell of a reputed church prophecy of an end-of-the-world war, an apocalyptic vision that foresees a bloody race war with the Kingstons as the ultimate victors. Chosen by their heavenly father to rule the world for a millennium. Yeah. That's fucking wild. You know, I played for you the Hank Kuhneman speaking in mm -hmm. tongues thing. That's, for the most part, just, you know, taking advantage of the, the soft-headed kind of people that are just willing to throw money at assholes like that. This is another kind of dangerous kind it of... Is, it, can be, it can be a hugely dangerous thing. Yeah. It, one is just separating the easily divided from their money from their right. money, right. but not actually telling them that, like, mm -hmm. we're going to be the ones that rule the yeah. world for a thousand years, which yeah. is fucking crazy, man. And one thing, one thing that really sucks, and it's a, it's a problem, it's a problem that we really have here, is we have these big families. Right. We have these, these big families like this that, like, will go off on the deep end. Mm-hmm. And Which was the whole premise of that under the under the banner of heaven? Yeah, you yeah. Know? Mm -hmm. Because and, there's and, been a major schism within right. the LDS, uh, the the Reformed Church of God, which is the LDS faith, mm -hmm. about how in the 1890s they decided to give up polygamy. You know, because they want they there, were forced yeah. at gunpoint to give up polygamy in order yeah. for them to become a state. But the, there are there are these huge there are these huge families. Yeah, and. We we kind of talk about them as if they're monolithic things. Yeah, but they're not. There's they're they're all, not. It's it's like hating the entire Bin Laden family <laughs> just for what Osama did. Right, right. <laughs> like, yes, you have these giant families like the the Kingstons and the uh, All Reds. And, oh Jesus, and I forgot about the All Reds. <laughs> I mean, there there are a few. There are, There's a lot of intermingling with those are, families too. <laughs> there are there are a bunch of them. You can't throw a fucking you can't swing a cat in a room in Salt Lake City without hitting a young or two. <laughs> it's you wind up with these giant progeny, these giant you know families like right. this. And the guy that you know, the guy that yeah. leases us this room that we do the show yeah. in has a prominent Mormon family tie to yeah. old Mormon money, you right. know, and so. And it's, yeah, it's, it's not. So yeah, he pulled them up by the bootstraps, you know. <laughs> yeah. It's not, it's, it's not hard to, it's not hard to find. And right. it's, it's easy to fall into the, the trap of, you know, like. Oh, wanting to blame them all. They're, yeah. It's, it's fine. They're, they're part of that family. 
which really, really sucks because I've known people <laughs> that are technically, you know, from these families, right? But they're like, fuck all that. <laughs> they're really not. Mm -hmm. They're just trying to like be trying but to just live like, a life. You they're know. getting. They get. They get sad. They get like swept in, and it. It's for, kind for, of it's kind of a weird, weirdly unique Utah problem, right? That these people can't, and, and I'm sure it happens in other places, other cultures too. But we have we have unique Utah dynasties, you know. We do, <laughs> and it's almost like it, it's a shitty thing to even think. But man, if you're gonna try to get away from a family like this, or even mm -hmm. a family name like this, you got to get the go, fuck out. Fucking change your name, man. Yeah, <laughs> just just do it. Like if but you were, then, a, but then again, but then again, what you find is is a lot of a lot of people in their family groups that are like, we're not all the way. They, they like we want to keep a toe in. Mm -hmm. Like we're not totally crazy. We we like. But there's some a lot of, of money it, there. There's, and there's a lot of money. And there's also but, the potential I could find a job if I needed right, to. Like you know. okay, well we want to be at Kingston, but you know we're not. We don't really like the whole racism thing. We don't just. We don't like their I, private we're, we're school just not thing. Do that. You know? Like we don't like gonna, the bilking of the government. We're that not going to say anything. About it. Now, we're, by all means, if if these guys sound it uh, sound like something you might have heard from recently, yeah. A and E did a series called mm -hmm. "Escaping Polygamy." Yeah, that was this group. So, yeah. but it's just wild to me that like you can watch a show like that. And be like, oh, that's just crazy. Look at that wild part of Utah. And like, no, motherfucker, we live here. <laughs> like, it's this not, is businesses in my backyard. <laughs> yeah, it's it's not <laughs> people down the street from me, man. It's not. It's not. This like is suburbia. Out in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> it is. Yeah, they live in the they live in the fucking suburbs. Right. <laughs> like I remember people watching a uh, Big Love on oh, HBO. I love, I love that all those show. years ago, and they're like, "It doesn't happen in downtown Salt Lake City." Oh, the fuck! Yes, it does. Yes, it does. What? A, what? A, okay, <laughs> we're gonna get off on a quick tangent here. Big Love. Yeah, I love the show. I hated the fact that any time that that Bill wanted to go visit the compound, mm -hmm. it was shown as like a quick trip. It would not be a quick trip from Salt Lake City. To the middle of whatever fucking compound that they had, because it was based off of like the ones on the borders of like Arizona and shit. It was oh, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh -huh. I'm like, that's a five fucking hour drive. He's like, I'm gonna go down and visit my mom today. Like that wouldn't be just like going down to Spanish Fork or anything like that. That'd be <laughs> much further fucking out for the compound that they had right, on that show. So. Right. But then again, I, I don't think they ever said that. Would, that would have been the they they modeled them after the Yearning for Zion people. The right, the, right. God damn it, what was his name? The, the weirdo that's like, you gotta keep sweet. That guy. I can't remember his goddamn name. The one that the, the FBI caught when he was driving his Ford Escalade, as the local news said one time. I'm like, no, dude, it's an Escalade. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Warren Jeffs. That's who it was. Yeah, oh, there yeah. you go. Yeah, that guy. It's a good show, though. Fucking love that show. <laughs> and now we don't have him in the world anymore. It's too yeah, bad. Yeah, it's, that's... Uh, yeah, it's a shame. Yeah, anytime I see any of the people, and I'm like, oh, hey, it's Margie from Big Love. I'm like, she has a real name, you know? I'm like, I don't care. That's who I know her. <laughs> <laughs> That's Barb. I know that one. Uh, where were we? We were talking about the uh, the Cornerstone. Oh, yeah, End of the War from Millennium. Mm -hmm. Okay, there we go. Uh, the Order denies that it encourages racism and homophobia within its ranks. And uh, <laughs> We don't encourage it. We don't discourage so, it. Responding to allegations made by former members, this is exactly like a letter that somebody would say, they're just mad. You know, mm -hmm. It's like Scientology saying, well, why would you trust them? They're not in the group anymore. You yeah. Know, that kind of thing. So uh, Kent Johnson, a spokesman for the Davis County Co-op Society, claimed that the order's foundational principles include the Golden Rule. <laughs> the Golden Rule, you know, treat others as you wish to be treated kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, that's why they have a whole fucking thing about bilking the government for millions of dollars for aid that they, they're not entitled to. So, And the church re rejects any form of racism or bigotry. Any form of it. Okay. It's a really easy thing for, you could just for any it, you organization know. to say. And in fact, <laughs> most organizations kind of do that. It's almost like a, a pretty standard it's form kind of a letter. Knee -jerk, like they this went is to Google plate. like yeah. letter to denounce racist 
thing. Yep, exactly. Like, oh, it's like <laughs> you got help from Clippy. It looks like you're trying to write a letter to <laughs> denounce racism within your organization. Here's Do a, you uh, want some help with that? Here's more from Johnson on this one. It says, we directly condemn in action and in words racist, homophobic, or hateful actions against any group or individual. Johnson maintained that the order's vast array of businesses, which we'll get to in a little bit, mm -hmm. which includes a grocery store, pawn shops, garbage disposal businesses, which was Washakie Renewable Energy, you know, yep. uh, an insurance company, a politically influential biofu biofuels plant. Yeah. Oh, that was Washakie. That was the one. You couldn't fucking go to a movie theater without hearing about Washakie Renewable Energies. They were broadcasting that all over the fucking place. And guess what? They never actually did anything. They took the money that the government was giving them, mm -hmm. and they never actually delivered on it. Absolutely so. nothing. Yep. And they also own a high-end firearms manufacturer, So, which yep, I'm going to be talking about that do. one here in a minute. So it employs individuals of various racial and ethnic minorities. It's like, you know, even in Gilead, they still had black people and Hispanic people, but they were the servant class, you know? Mm -hmm. God damn, man. It's like... Yeah, of course they're going to be still hire people because they still need folks to do labor for them. That doesn't mean behind their back they're not like, oh, you can't get a honest day's work out of these people, you know. These damn Lamanites kind of shit that you would hear. Christ. Yeah, they were. Yeah. They would say some old-timey shit like mm -hmm. that, you know, even yeah. though it's a complete fucking made-up term. So. <laughs> <laughs> so this letter asserts that one of the earliest members of the church was a Native American man and that the co-op, as it is sometimes called, has been the victim of prejudice and harassment by Utah's majority religion, a.k.a. the LDS Church. And I I don't deny, I don't deny that they probably are getting fucking hassled by the LDS Church because it makes them look bad, you know? Sure. But it's also, like, totally infighting. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> you have more money than we do. Well, yeah, we're gonna fucking stomp on you then, so... Uh, because of the former's progressive ideas, this group claims to be progressive, not the LDS Church, which is funny to me. So it said, indeed, the group was founded during the Great Depression as a communal religious organization where members dedicated their earnings and possessions to building the kingdom of God on earth, as one church document attests. The order is referenced to the United Order, a quasi-utopian society proposed by LDS founder Joseph Smith and practiced in some Mormon communities under the leadership of early church president Brigham Young, which is what we talk about whenever we're talking about early church history is that mm -hmm. they were surprisingly a lot more like communists and, you know, uh, about taking care of one another. When it came to caring for other people, though, <laughs> it, yeah. if you're on the out group, <laughs> No, fuck you. <laughs> and also, uh, if you uh, you have to think and believe exactly what we believe in order to get it's the same fucking thing we have now with the bishop's storehouse and uh, right. a lot being able to get stuff with the charity that you get from the LDS Church in this state. There are strings. There are very like hard strings that are attached to it. So mm -hmm. you can go to the state of Utah and get like emergency food if you need to. But if they if they say you can go talk to these religious groups, if you're not Mormon, you're going to have to start going to studies and stuff. And if you are Mormon, boy, you're going to have to put in some free labor <laughs> to make up for the for the food that they're giving you. Oh, yeah. Yep. Even though they're mm -hmm. a multi hundreds of billions of dollars fucking oh, yeah. religious organization. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I, I, I remember I remember my family going through that. Yeah. My like, like it's, <laughs> it was not. Oh man, the the church got a lot of free labor out of my dad. Yep my uh, my wife's mom was a single mother of mm -hmm. two kids and trying to get through college, but she got a lot of help from the church. And in return, <laughs> now that she's wealthy enough for you, whatever it is that they do, she donates a lot more during fast testimony, and she gets all this other money from tithing mm -hmm. and just. You're expected to give as much as you possibly can because obviously God smiled upon you with the blessings that he gave you. You know, we came over and mowed your yard. Give us money. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <sighs> guilt is, the guilt is a, is a thing. Then they use it. Oh, they use it. So the order can claim, uh, rightly claim discrimination by mainstream Mormonism. But this is due primarily to its embrace of polygamy. 
which is the LDS churches officially abandoned in the 1890s in order for Utah to become a state like we talked about. Uh, Mm -hmm. The renunciation of polygamy is now church doctrine. It's in their doctrine, but the thing is, I've heard from multiple people that are LDS that it's only in the doctrine of living on earth. Mm -hmm. When it comes to the afterlife, you're you're expected to be a polygamist because one God cannot possibly have enough spiritual children with just one wife. Yeah, it's wild, guys. We we could talk for an hour on the plan of salvation. Oh, we absolutely, so. yeah, absolutely. Could. Coming next week, we're going to talk <laughs> plan of salvation. No. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, and- don't don't bother trying to explain to women how. Uh, sorry, when you die, you lose your rights. <laughs> you only have rights. <laughs> you are if- not really. You don't. You don't have autonomy. Uh, in heaven, we're in heaven you have to be called by your husband in the afterlife in order for you to join at his side you know so that's not used for any kind of bullying purposes or abusive purposes he might not want you yeah so he won't call you by your new name that you get at the temple the same day as all the other women that get the same name right (laughs) guys it's fucking wild man so And it's funny to go to like ex Mormon spaces and everybody's like talking about what their new names are. (laughs) They gave me the new name Nimrod. If that wasn't a slap in the face, I I realize it now. (laughs) (laughs) They they literally have a list of names they go through based on what day it is, and everybody gets the same fucking name. Mm -hmm. They're lazy as fuck. No God, it it is fucking mass produced religion, is what it is. It is the it is the Henry Ford version of religion. <laughs> it is a fucking conveyor belt, easily put together assembly line bullshit. You know, oh, like in and out. Yeah, yeah. Shitty. Well, it's still one of the few places I can go to to get a bunless burger that's actually pretty good. You know, but that's just me though. Yeah, their fries suck ass though. It I'll is. fight anybody that says otherwise. <laughs> It's, and their burgers are nothing special. There's just fucking two patties that are a patty or two that you get with American cheese on. It's not that great. Quit fucking saying the in and outs the best burger. <laughs> it tastes like McDonald's did when I was a kid, you know? Which kind of exactly how McDonald's tastes nowadays, too. It's not really changed much in flavor over the years. No, they're, they're, still, they're, still, they're still going through all the, uh, the stockpile of burger patties from the 80s. Yeah. All the rainforest cows they got. All the rainforest cows. <laughs> yep. <laughs> this one tastes like Amazon. Oh, indigenous tribe. You taste so delicious. Mm. <laughs> okay, so. This the... one tastes like an extinct, uncontacted tribe. <laughs> and the Mormon church has a poli- uh, policy of excommunicating polygamists. Sure they do. Sometimes. When they're caught. Yeah, and when their checks don't clear. <laughs> The Kingston forebears were among those who suffered this fate. Uh, polygamy is currently outlawed in Utah. Uh, sorry, air quotes. Outlawed in Utah because there's plenty of polygamous families in this state, both by the state's constitution and in statute where it is a third degree felony. Mm-hmm. Yep. It is actually one of those really, really weird things. <laughs> I don't actually agree with it being illegal. No, And that's the thing. It's like... I- if it like, was if it was polygamy just as you know getting to decide that you want to be married to more than one person what the fuck does the state care you know if it's if it's a consensual adult you know right. uh, adult relationship i i don't but I the problem is like have it becomes the children that are brought up in some of these relationships where it becomes a you're expected to which we'll get to here in a minute so yeah uh, it's punishable by a five years in prison, but for their part, the order and other fundamentalist sects of the LDS church exist in a state of apostasy for abandoning what they see as a bedrock principle of their faith. And that's kind of what we we're talking about at the very beginning with under the banner of heaven is that there's a schism in the LDS church because current Mormon church versus founding Mormon church are very night and day different organizations. Very much so. <laughs> Weirdly, crazily so. like. They actually admit to the seer stone in the hat. They admit that Joseph Smith didn't actually, or nobody that were the first witnesses actually saw the plates. You know, Mm -hmm. these are articles that you can read on the fucking Mormon website. They bury them, but they're there. They're hard to find. (laughs) Yeah. But there's a lot of stuff for years and years and years. No, that didn't exist. No, that didn't happen. No, that's not real. They finally just had to eat shit and put it out there because they could 
run the possibility of getting sued for this shit nowadays. But the LDS church, as Joseph Smith had it, had a schism at the very beginning because they broke off after his death because one wanted to follow the lineage of Joseph Smith's family being in retention of running the church and the other half fucked off to Utah, you know, which is what you had. Church of Christ, I think, is what the ones that stayed I, in I wherever don't, they were. I, I, don't don't, I used to know a lot of this stuff, but I've forgotten most of it. It matters so little to me that I <laughs> did not retain the information. <laughs> you guys can find all the stuff out there. Go listen to uh, uh, Bryce Blankenagle's uh, Naked Mormonism podcast. Yeah. He's got a great fucking history of all this stuff. So we're just uh, hangers on. We just give you guys the, the top level stuff. We'll <laughs> refer you to people that are experts, not us. So let's see. So, but for their part, the order and other fundamentalist sects believe, oh, apostasy, we already talked about that part. Mm -hmm. uh, the order yeah. came into existence when the founder, Charles Eldon Kingston, saw Jesus in the mountains above the family's settlement in Bountiful, Utah, inspiring him to create this, doc this church in the, in the 1930s. Which, I mean, it was very sparsely populated at that time here. It in, was in pretty Utah. sparsely populated, yeah. But, like, there's not a whole lot of caves <laughs> up in Bountiful. I know there are. There's a surprise. There's enough, number. but yeah. <laughs> it's just weird that, like, in this one specific cave right here, Jesus appeared to my grandpa. <laughs> You have to be so credulous for this stuff to <laughs> fucking work on you, man. No, no, I saw Jesus. No, I really did. It's like me walking through Walmart today. Did you fart? No, that wasn't me. Yeah. No. <laughs> for that, you have to go listen to the live stream this week. You really should go find that one. Um, Kingston's father, who had three wives, um, Eldon, Eldon was his son, and he... Oh, no, Eldon was the guy. So Kingston's, Kingston's father, who had three wives, and Eldon continued this tradition. He had five wives and 17 children in the 1930s, 1940s. That is too many children. None of those kids are getting any kind of proper upbringing in the amount of love that they need. You know, they're being ignored or they're being raised by other kids at that point. Like it is, it is to know kids, other kids, to know people who, who grew up in families that big, like this, yeah. that big. I'm, I've known, I have known people that grew up thinking that their, their older sister or, or older brother were like a mother or father to them, was, you know, was their mom or dad, <laughs> like people that literally thought their own parents were grandma and grandpa. And I've, I've known some families Damn, that's that hard actually, up, <laughs> they actually go with it. That's weird. Because, dude. because it was just. <laughs> Because it's just it easier was, to it go was with, easier to go yeah. with, and it was more, it, it was <laughs> socially acceptable because your sister and brother are in their 40s. This kid is brand new. Yeah. For some reason, they were able to like weirdly get a 90 year old to pop out a kid. <laughs> no, post not, post not menopausal. Literally, not literally, but, but like, that's a miracle. <laughs> No, I'm, I'm kidding. No, it's, it's like on the cusp of menopause. People <laughs> having that having one last kid, go. That you one know. last go. Uh, but, you know, Find, dad is, finding that dad tiniest is clown like, in like the clown in his, car. <laughs> dad is in his 80s. Mom's in her, her late, late 50s. 60s. Yes. Early this 60s. This is exactly like fucking like, Tony Randall having a kid right, right before he died, man. <laughs> And like, just because you can make old cum doesn't mean you, should, you need to put it to work. That's all I'm saying is that <laughs> it's, it's poor. I've, that's got to be some lazy sperm, so, dude. <laughs> I feel bad for, I feel bad. I feel bad for these people <laughs> because these are, these are kids who they don't ask to they be don't born into be this born situation. This, yeah, exactly. It's not their fault. Which is why we kind of grow up in fucked up situations and many, many of them turn out to be fine people <laughs> that that then have to like deal with unwrapping this trauma that they didn't realize that they were being subjected to which is why our position on the show is kind of started to slowly pivot to antinatalism <laughs> <You know? laughs> exactly <laughs> fuck the kids don't have no any. no i mean don't don't i mean fuck not really no, just 
but uh, just prevent them from being suffering in the beginning for the right, be- right. <laughs> fuck having kids that's what it, like no kids just, just, don't bring them into this <laughs> they didn't ask <laughs> just oh god if you can avoid it do do not do, have kids. do not have kids <laughs> and for the love of god stop it stop <laughs> it like like two or three if you can't help it yeah yeah see thank you for including me on that one <laughs> not your kid's fault. No, it wasn't my kid's fault. I mean, it's your fault, but it's not your kid's fault. I'm still mad at that OBGYN. <laughs> you <man>. should be. <laughs> I told you about that appointment where we go in and the doctor's like, oh, well, let's find where the heartbeat is. And like, oh, it looks like you were having twins. Gee, thanks for telling us that we potentially have a dead twin inside there now. And he's like, oh, wait, no, there's a heartbeat. <laughs> motherfucker think about before you say stuff out loud uh, that was crazy so Eldon the, the leader of this church group he instituted the church law of one above the other requiring members to have blind obedience to the church's hierarchy of numbered men so they literally do the bureaucracy system from Futurama yeah. where they have the the chief bureaucratist, which is like zero zero one, and then everybody else is ranked beyond them. <laughs> With Eldon, of course, being brother number one. Now, Eldon, he died in nineteen forty eight of a terrible way of going, but he died of penile cancer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't mean to laugh at somebody dying of something so horrible, but mm. at the same time, you'd be like. What's this lump? <laughs> but then again, it was the 40s. They didn't really have very good treatments or understanding of what the fuck cancer was. There's, you know? there's not a lot you can do. <laughs> so the, d- despite the efforts of some family members to burn away the cancer using acid. Oh, 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 oh it sucks, man. I mean, I've had the, the little bit too much soap on there before, but man, acid. Desperate, <laughs> desperate times, but <laughs> there's a point where there's there there's a point where you just say, "Kill me." Mm-hmm. Please, that, that's please, probably after please, burning please, away two inches. Please, you know. for the love of God, <laughs> like, well, here we can try. We can try burning the cancer out of your dick with acid. <laughs> Or just let me die, <laughs> or kill me. Or we can go push you off the cliff. Grampy, do you want to go for a short ride? <laughs> like, I'll take... Just look at the flowers, you know, just... I'll take the cliff. Yeah. I'll take the... I'll take the... Um, do you have any opium? Oh, God. <laughs> can you just give me a... So, to, to give, give a, a... Give me a good... Give kind of a... Opium. Give a time reference here. We're, we're doing this currently on the 10th of uh, September when we're recording yeah. this one. And... um. My kids are learning about 9-11 in school, right? And so they're, one, I hate the fact that they have a teacher that's trying to say that there are motivations behind what Al-Qaeda did that weren't actually referenced in anything that's out there. <laughs> that That's not what I'm going to talk about. But they were like, my daughter was talking about how people jumped from the building because they just wanted to end it all instead of, you know, burning in a fire kind of thing. And I'm like, fuck, this is heavy stuff they're giving a sixth grader. But at the same time, I'm also like, well, it's not the fu- I'm making jokes about n- I'm already there. It's been 20 yeah. years. I'm ready. You know? I, it, yeah. I, they're, my, I told my daughter, I'm like, well, jumping out of the building's not going to kill you. She's like, what? <laughs> I said, it's not the fall that kills you. It's the sudden stop. And my wife from another room away just started fucking cackling. You know, because I'm telling this to an 11 year old that I felt so bad. I'm like, fuck, that's dark. <laughs> I'm like, welcome to dad's real sense of humor, kid. <laughs> Get the fuck yep. over it. It's been 21 years, man. <laughs> <laughs> There's a point. There's, yeah. It's old enough to have drinks now, you know? God damn it. It's old enough to rent a car. Yeah. It's fine. We've had We've had things that are worse happened since yeah um it was still pretty fucking bad and, and horrific but there there have been there have been other things there have been other things that have happened and i think we are ready to collectively say yeah that sucked that was a pretty shitty day and period in time i just listened to moving a, on i listened to a special where they were talking about the cult of 9-11 where it became yeah. the 
both people on the left and the right sacrificed everything in order to get revenge mm -hmm. back at the people who struck at us because they struck at the central institution of this country, which is a general religion that we have a state religion where America is a special country that we stand above all others. And if anybody strikes at us, we must get them back kind of thing. And it's just there's, like, yeah, like, fuck. Yeah, that's true, man. Well, there, there's that. We had Christopher there, Hitchens like defending this shit, man. There, there are, there were so many branches right. of of this. Like, oh, they attacked America. Yep. Fuck them. So There's many like at the time. they attacked New York. Fuck those motherfuckers. Yep. <laughs> and then there are people like, oh, they attacked the World Trade Center. They attacked they, capitalism. <laughs> they they crashed me stonks. So. Uh, like the 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 reaction is basically the same for all of them, but the motivations are very very different. Right, and so it, it was, was just it's a it was a wild time, and it's been twenty one fucking years. And uh, I think Hunter Thompson pointed it out that like, mm -hmm. and it was in an ESPN article, and I remember of reading this the, before. Of all, of all the, the fucking places, places yeah. he could write this, is that the generation beyond this one, the Generation Z, is never going to know a time before this thing happened. Because they've they have leveraged their entire future based upon revenge of the now, mm -hmm. you know, and it was just, it was a wildly accurate fucking article yeah. to exactly how we are right now right. for a guy that did tons of drugs and eventually and heroed himself because he just didn't want to be in this mm -hmm. existence anymore because yep. this world fucking sucks, man. Yeah. Speaking of people that fucking suck, that the, <laughs> this guy, so he died of a uh, penile cancer, right? Yep. Yeah. He, uh, he predicted before his death that he would be resurrected from the dead. How's that going for you? So, uh, clan members kept his body on ice for three days. Yeah. To, to no avail, <laughs> says the <laughs> article. <laughs> his brother, John Ortel Kingston, took over the leadership of the order and incorporated in the 1970s as the Latter-day Church of Christ. We talked about that. Ortel is credited with expanding the order's businesses, empire, and making the family immensely wealthy. His seven sons and two daughters by LaDonna Peterson, the second of his 13 wives, Jesus. are reputed to be the inner circle that runs the cult. He was a stern disciplinarian who, in later years, looked and dressed like a mortician. <laughs> I can't help but think about, like, the, uh, the, the preacher guy from uh, the Poltergeist movies. Oh, or... uh. <laughs> Yeah. Or I, I was also honestly thinking about the actual Undertaker from WWE before, <laughs> before like he started wearing the just all the wrestling shit, not the duster and everything like that. But, right. You know, yeah. Back in the day. So Ortel made incest a tenant of the clan's faith, informed by his work by breeding Holstein cows on the Kingston's dairy farm. Cool, man. Fucking cool. <laughs> Human cattle. Well. Wow. Works out okay for the cows. <laughs> the cows don't exactly have to do long division or multiplication. <laughs> or worry about that third arm growing out of them. So, uh, in 1999, uh, th there was a Salt Lake Tribune article that mapped the Kingston's incestuous family tree, quoting one of Ortel's 65 kids. This is in 1999. Ex-order member Connie Rugg as saying, My father experimented with inbreeding in his cattle, and then he turned to his children. <laughs> Fuck, man. This guy's... Holy shit! <laughs> Ew. <laughs> in order to maintain his family's superior bloodlines, it says in quotes, Ortel married and had children with two of his half-sisters and with two nieces. Jesus Christ, man. <laughs> he orchestrated all unions uh, within the cult, so that's very that's very cult-like behavior right there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Which was maintained with classic mind control techniques, mm -hmm. corporal punishment, fasting, and bizarre dietary practices. Ortel finally died in 1987. We don't know if it was penile cancer that got him <laughs> on this one either, but it'd be funny if it was. But his progeny continued the polygamy, the inbreeding, and the marriages to young female teens that he instituted. Uh, control of the order then passed to Ortel's well-educated son, Paul Kingston, one of the several lawyers in a cult whose members dress normally and try not to draw attention to themselves. This unremarkable, 
balding middle-aged man reportedly has 27 wives with over 300 children. And three of his wives are half-sisters, one is a first cousin, and two are nieces. <laughs> what Good. the fuck, Christ. man? <laughs> Similarly, his older brother, John Daniel Kingston, had 14 wives, and four of them are his half-sisters, and another is a first cousin. So incest is also a third-degree felony in Utah, and as with mm -hmm. polygamy, convictions are rare. Over the years, state law enforcement and the courts have sporadically addressed the incest within the Kingston ranks. In 99, Paul's younger brother, David Ortel Kingston, was convicted of taking his 16-year-old niece as wife number 15. The incest came to light after the girl tried to escape. The arranged celestial marriage, and which was an illegal marriage, sans license. Mm -hmm. you know. Right, right. Her was, disobedience yeah. incurred the wrath of her brother, Daniel, who took her to a family ranch near the Idaho border and savagely beat her. The girl, who as an adult, when unsuccessfully sued the clan, then walked miles to the nearest gas station where she called the police. Daniel was eventually arrested and, and spent 28 weeks in a county jail for felony child abuse. David was sentenced to 10 years in prison for the incest, but only served four before being paroled. Fuck me, man. So, <laughs> Yeah. Exactly. A couple of years right. later, another clan member, Jeremy Kingston, pleaded guilty for, to incest for taking a 15-year-old Luann Kingston as his fourth wife. Jeremy was nearly 10 years her senior at the time, and due to the Kingston's convoluted genealogy, Luann was both his first cousin and his aunt. Fuck. <laughs> I'm my own grandpa. <laughs> That's what it sounds like to me. As part There's of his, there's a point where the family tree stops being a straight it's a line, hedge. <laughs> and and it 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 like curls back, onto becomes a itself. fucking Mobius strip, dude. <laughs> Not Morbius strip, but Mobius strip. <laughs> Morbin strip. Mor it's Morbin it's time. Morbin <laughs> That's what this guy strip. says when he gets into the bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> it's Morbin time. So in oh, a God. in a uh, it's terrible in a secret uh, videotape of order church meetings that aired on escaping polygamy, Paul's mm -hmm. nephew Nick Young, speaking from a church lectern, identifies himself as a numbered man, number seventy two to be precise. He said, "Young is the owner of Desert Tech, which is a Utah gun manufacturer which produces sniper rifles and bullpup rifles." And we don't need to know what a bullpup is if you know guns. It's just the, the action and the clip are usually, or sorry, magazine for you fucking gun mm -hmm. nerds out there are behind the grip. So, yeah. And these guns cost anywhere from 2500 to 8000 I pulled up one and I started building one just to see what it would cost for a baseline one. And I got to $2,700 just for a basic model of one of these things, mm -hmm. which is, that's a lot of fucking money for a thing that goes pew. You know, that's. Yeah. You don't need to spend that much. You can go to a pawn shop and get one a lot it's fucking a, it's cheaper, a, dude. It's a, thing, it's a thing that goes pew, and, and it has very, very few practical uses. Yeah, besides killing things. <laughs> I mean, that is the only that is practical the only. use. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so Desert Tech and its rifles have been featured on Fox News, Mythbusters, Daredevil, and The Blacklist, among other TV shows. Yeah. Young told Intelligence Report that his company has sold weapons with the approval of the U.S. State Department to governments in Europe and the Middle East, Saudi Arabia being one of such countries. So mm -hmm. they're international arms dealers, guys. Yep. Just giving you a heads up about these Kingston clan. So if they can sell them worldwide, guess what they can also do? Stockpile them. Just saying. Young also claimed that Desert Tech had sold guns to Picatinny Arsenal, which was a research division of the U.S. military. Mm -hmm. I bet you anything that had anything to do with the new version of the uh, Army rifle that's going to be coming out here pretty soon, mm -hmm. because they're moving on from the M4 to like the, I can't remember what it was. It's a much higher caliber bullet with a lot more fucking powder behind it. So, yeah. because, you know, armor is a thing nowadays, and we just need to shoot people through that. So, hmm. goddamn. Uh, we haven't got any big U.S. contracts, said. Uh, obviously, we would love to. So, spokesman for both the U.S. State Department and Picatinny, Picatinny Arsenal would never, neither verify nor deny Young's claims. So, that's a yes. <laughs> Even though the government can't say yes or no based on stuff like that, it, it's implicitly a yes. Yeah. Uh, the company was founded in 2007 with an investment from family members, and Young denied that the order was racist or taught any form of bigotry. And he said that all he had people of all races working for him. So it's the corporate line. The mm -hmm. same thing we heard earlier same, in the letter. Exact so. Same thing. Yeah. 
We're taught what we're taught is to love our neighbor, that all people, all races, no matter who they are, deserve to be loved. That's like the GOP standard right now as mm-hmm. well. He still conceded that some order members have prejudiced beliefs because in our organization, people have a freedom of choice. <laughs> That's OK. You're, you could be racist. Our religion says you can be right. Right. It's totally fine. It's fine. It's fine, they say. <laughs> so so what about polygamy, they ask the guy. Is it a requirement to gain the highest levels of heaven? It is in the LDS church. <laughs> it is. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I believe in it, he said. And as far as how you end up in heaven, that's up to God. So he, he declined to comment whether he participates in polygamy, but this uh, group then read the names of women believed to be his wives, four of them in all. He says, okay, I have one legal wife. He said, but I do have children with other women. <laughs> what does that fucking say, man? And he can't actually say the, the P word because that'd right, be admitting to something. But anyway, mm-hmm. and asked if two of the women were in fact his first cousins, Young paused and finally replying, I guess I'm curious as to what you're trying to get at here. <laughs> That's not a no. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, most people. I'm just, most people, <laughs> if they were to get that question, would say no. Like, no, and also none of your fucking business, you, who like I'm married even to. It, like, that's one of those, like, Do, when did you stop you beating can, your wife? You know, hold the microphone yeah, up to. <laughs> you, don't, you don't need to answer that question. <laughs> right. You don't need to answer that question. But at the same time, to answer it that I way, I'm pretty goddamn <laughs> sure that anybody who gets asked that question would answer it. No, 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 no. None of the mothers of my children are my cousins. Absolutely. No. Uh uh-uh. uh. No. No. Before the call ended, Young insisted that. He didn't admit to any kind of incest or anything. He and didn't deny it. <laughs> when the intelligence report required if Young thought there was anything wrong with first cousins getting married, he opined that such issues were between the individuals involved and God. That's a yes. <laughs> Nevertheless, the former members of the order say that incest and racism are inextricably linked from the order's teachings. Yeah. Sir, during an interview with this reporter, Lou Ann Kingston, whose defiance of the cult led to the conviction of her former spiritual husband, Jeremy, Recalled that order members saw intermarriage as a way to keep the bloodline pure. Mm. And what does pure mean? Pure, of course, in this instance, means pure white. So all outsiders are considered to be beneath order members, she explained. But the order saves most of its bile for blacks and other non-whites. Oh, but of course. Ethnic jokes and stereotypes were commonly repeated. Chinese people were called stupid, and Mexicans were dirty, said Lu An, mm-hmm. adding, because of their skin. Because the LDS Church teaches that anybody who doesn't have white skin is a lesser human being. Mm-hmm. It's in their goddamn doctrine, people. Don't come yeah. at me with this shit. Allison, a 17-year-old ex-Kingston member, says not much has changed since Lu An's day. I didn't even know the N-word was bad until I was like 15 or 16, she said. Mm-hmm. So once free of the cult, Luann, Alice, and another ex order members have had to unlearn the hatred that was drilled into their heads. Yep. The mere rumor of black blood can condemn somebody in the eyes of order members. And that's what happened with a family called the Tuckers. <laughs> Tucker is one another one of Ortel's many, uh, many sons, though not from the favored wife, LaDonna. Seated on a couch, sipping lemonade in his home in a Salt Lake City suburb, he resembles Paul Kingston quite a bit. The two were playmates when they were young boys. A loyal order member for years, he lost his faith and ended up leaving the order over a curse of sorts levied at his family by LaDonna. Supposedly, LaDonna had a dream wherein it was revealed that anyone who left the order would be tainted by black blood. Somehow, LaDonna's curse was transferred to the Tuckers via Christy, Ron's wife, because Christy's mom left the order and then married an Irishman before leaving him and returning to the church. Oh, yes, the famously... The famously the black-blooded famously Irishman. Black-blooded Irishman. <laughs> black Irish! You know. It's not that then, not that not then, impossible. Not, that, not I'm impossible, saying. but I'm just... It's kind of funny when it's... it happened on Ray Donovan. That was a... <laughs> <laughs> um, I could see that the leaders of the Order really did believe that we had black ancestors, said Ron, with Christy next to him and his adult daughters Emily and Julie nearby. 
Boys began to show an interest in Julie as she matured, but Paul, as the clan's leader, warned them away because of Julie's black blood. Mm. Up to this point, Julie had treated the rumor as a joke. Her younger sister Emily thought it was a joke too, until one day, another Order kid had told her, we can't play with you because the Tuckers are N-word. Just even the, the slightest yeah. hint that they could potentially have, you know, non-pure blood in their family is enough to do this stuff. So Julie left the cold at 19 and her parents and siblings eventually left as well. Uh, the cult's justification for its racism goes back to early Mormon teachings as the war in heaven between the forces of Satan and those of Jesus. We know all this stuff already. And mm -hmm. they were given black skin because of it. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Another one of uh, Ortel's teachings. Adolf Hitler had the right idea about creating a master race. Yeah. Okay. Hey, I'm sorry, man. <laughs> the minute you go, yeah, but what about all the good stuff that Hitler did? <laughs> You're in the wrong fucking <laughs> booth, man. <laughs> yeah. Nope. But you know what? You know why Hitler di it didn't work for him? Because he didn't have the Lord's help or tell thought. That's why he failed. So Tucker recounted the clan's version of the apocalypse, the end of the world war, a riff on a prophecy. Some ascribed to Joseph Smith, you know, the white horse prophecy mm -hmm. and in it, black people come close to killing off the white race. Jesus Christ. man! <laughs> Until they are countered by native Americans symbolized <laughs> by a red horse, which gallops to the white horse's rescue. <laughs> you might be racist if <laughs> good <laughs> fuck these people dude <laughs> oh we're gonna get to the best one in a minute because it's a sub headline called soy makes you gay <laughs> oh come on oh my god uh we're gonna get we're, i'm gonna skip past the rest of this stuff they want to homogenize the people, make one race. Anyway, they just keep going on. Mm -hmm. There's there's a great article linked here, of course. You can uh you can check this one out. So um, it says that hatred of gays was big in the Kingston clan with the word, hmm, F, you know, right, the, that yeah, word yeah, in yeah. frequent mm -hmm. use for fun. He and other order men would go to a park frequented by gay males looking for victims and we would cause harm. He confessed bad harm, hospital harm. You know what we know as gay bashing these yep. days. So while part of the order, Val Snow, a 20 I mean, gay, that's, that's the, that's the, that's the, that's the polite term. That's the polite term for it. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Um, a 20 something gay man with a wry sense of humor believed being gay was like spitting in the eye of God. Snow is the son of Daniel Kingston, whom he paints as a little man with a lot of power. Keep in mind, I said that Val is gay and he left this group. So thank goodness for him. At a young age, uh, Snow worked for order companies to help feed his siblings, which is a responsibility of some Kingston men uh, that mm -hmm. as they're known to shirk, uh, Snow began dating men when he was 22. And when this finally got around to his dad, his father packed up Snow's belongings and left them in the room of a hotel owned by the Order. Daniel's ultimatum, stay in the Order, date no one, and have no con contact with family, or leave. So, Snow left. So good, good for him. him. Yeah. <laughs> good. So, the Order regards homosexuality as a choice, of course. Of course if is. gay men stay in the closet, they're allowed to remain in the cult as worker bees, it says here. Snow also remembered being taught end time prophecies with a cleansing, wherein the streets of Salt Lake City would run red with blood. We got white ass streets in this in Salt Lake City. It'd be a lot of blood, dude. <laughs> would take quite a bit. Yeah. All of the gay people would be the first to go, he said. Another of the cult's teaching was that soy can make you gay. An anti-government conspiracy theory popular in some right-wing circles. I guess I just had too much soy, said Snow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's that fucking, it's the head rearing up of the phytoestrogen from soybeans. Mm -hmm. It's like, they're delightful. Tofu is a delight. You know, even just like, like baked, not baked, what the hell am I thinking of you? The, the ones that are like uh, air dried or fried, not fried, but they're. Like how they do with peanuts, the air roast them kind of thing. You get air roasted yeah. soybeans. Yeah. They're fucking delicious, Dry roasted man. Soybeans. Dry roasted yeah, soybeans yeah, with yeah. salt. Yeah. Oh my God, they're good. And have you had edamame? You never yeah. had, You guys need to have some fucking edamame. It's some good shit. So anyway, <laughs> we don't need to tell everybody to eat more soy. <laughs> so ex order members interviewed by this group generally agreed with the characterization of Kingston's clan as a hate group. Uh, Ron Tucker went so far as to call his former brethren white supremacists and 10 times more racist than your run of the mill skinhead. That's a lot of racism, too. That is a lot of racism. <laughs> that's 
That's like extra racist. That's super that racist. Is, <laughs> that's like ghost pepper level racism right there. That's, that's not just. That's not just. That is Carolina Reaper racism <laughs> right there. <laughs> Ten times more hot than those Thai chilies that you can get. You know. <laughs> Uh, in the 80s, the state of Utah sued Ortel Kingston over a welfare fraud related to his many wives. Mm. Rather than submit to DNA tests, which would have revealed the incest in his brood, he coughed up a more than $200,000 settlement. And more recently, the Kingston-owned Washakie Renewable Energy agreed to, agreed to pay a $3 million fine after it was sued by the federal government for raking in tax credits for biofuels that it never produced. Yep. So the order's critics uh, say that cult members see nothing wrong with bilking the government, which is a time-honored I mean, of tradition they don't. Yeah. among yeah. the other FLDS sects, gleefully mm -hmm. referring to it as bleeding the beast. Mm -hmm. you know? uh, during a contentious 2004 custody case that ensued when Jessica and her sister fled the Kingston household, a judge in the case reportedly was the subject of a death threat, allegedly from the clan members. There was also testimony during one hearing that someone in the Kingston clan wanted to blow up the courthouse. I mean, that's just general political discourse in 2022, it seems <laughs> like, this, nowadays. At this point, it's like... You no, know, it was wild sure. back then when you got those, but nowadays, be like, yeah, of course, yeah, you're going to fucking kill me. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah I yeah, totally yeah. believe you. Good job, man. <laughs> uh, let's see. Ron King said the order's leadership has too much to lose from something like a, a threat to law enforcement to happen. Paul would rather have the wealth and the money than the isolation and conflict, he said. They're basically the Utah mafioso with the white power with of the white power world, he said, and they're growing. Former order members tell tell of babies being born nearly every week within this church, and during a recent picnic to honor the birthday of Patriarch John Ortel Kingston, order families descended on Salt Lake City Valley Park, where hundreds of children of all ages blanketed the park's green expanse. <sighs> That's. That's not too weird because we see lots of giant families happen. That happens a lot in Utah, guys. I wish it was an exception, but uh, there are accounts of clan babies being born with congenital defects and other problems abound, including dwarfism, albinism, and children born minus fingernails or without genitals. Home births and frequent miscarriages are still and stillborns among the Kingston have led to macabre legends of dead infants buried in backyards. There are accounts of dead babies being buried at the Holy Spot, a tree-shrouded patch of land across the street from a grade school in Bountiful, just north of Salt Lake City. And I know exactly which one they're talking about here. So, <laughs> uh, asked about these legends, Kingston spokesman Kent Johnson explained via email, <laughs> of course, that on occasion, order families have asked to spread the ashes of a child lost before that place. Uh, Johnson also acknowledged the hearing family lore dating to the Depression era of order families burying fetuses from late-term miscarriages on their respective properties. Don't let the infant deaths and tales of horrific deformities belie Ortel's homespun eugenics. And Scott remembered that Ortel had an answer for that question. Something along the lines of, and this is the wrap us up here, in order to build a Superman, if you have four or five defects to get to the good one, it's worth it, he recalled, because that one is going to be genius level purity. And that is what the order is looking for. I, um, mm. that worked out really well for, uh, Immortan Joe. <laughs> I was going to say he had the one that was strapping, a strapping young lad. Wasn't very smart though, <laughs> but also that's a movie, mm -hmm. not real life. So. Uh, there was a charter school that just this year they found out that it was uh, it was a polygamy linked charter school paying hundreds of thousand dollars to different companies that it was getting from state funds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, two million dollars to private school linked to these guys. It was Insign Learning Center. Mm -hmm. Oh no, sorry, it was Vanguard was the name of the place. It was, oh yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, Vanguard Private School in West Valley City, and there's all kinds of stuff about finances. I will put all these notes out there, but there are at least a couple of dozen member assets like A1 Disposal, A&W Restaurants, AAA Communications, AAA Security. You have Amusement Games, which used to sell every fucking arcade game in this state that's mm -hmm. not around anymore. You have Desert Tech, which we talked about there. You have yep. Insign Learning Academy, Insign Learning Center, Insign Shoe, Factory Outlet Stores, Family First Medicine, Family Stores True Value, which is shocking to me to see that one. Uh, John's Marketplace. Kingston Corporate. Oh, that's just the corporation of these guys. Little Red Schoolhouse, which is now defunct. 
uh, Ralph's Milk Farm, Redwood Grocery and Health Foods, Shopper's Pawn, Sportsman's Pawn, you know, like tons mm-hmm. of pawn shops around here. Washakie Farm, Washakie Ranch, World Ex- World Enterprises, Extreme Pond, Zion Ponderosa Ranch Resort, and this really weird one that said ZMPC9. I'm like, I got to see what that one is. <laughs> and it's Zion's Multipurpose Center 9, which is a still open business that basically is like a multi-use gym. You know, yeah. you can you can play basketball in it. You can play volleyball in it. It's just what, whoever needs to rent out the space, you know. And it's it, there's it's a brand new looking website, so not terribly well done, but it's a it's a mm. business that does exist still. So they're still making lots of money in the yeah. state, and they're not going anywhere. And uh, if uh, anything happens to Kyle and myself for this studio, you know who did it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah. uh, let's see. The Abyssian says this reminds me of a Galego uh, Galego world uh, Zinio uh, or Shinio which means both genius and spoiled milk. Kingston mm-hmm. thinks he's making the first kind, but he's making the second kind. Smacking my fucking head. So so that's the Kingston's for you, guys. Fucking wild group. They, <laughs> oh, you had a story about these guys because you went to the uh, the Atheist of Utah camping trip that one time yeah, that so, we didn't get I mean, to tell anybody. Several, several years ago. Yeah. yeah, several years ago. Yeah, we were... Back when we were involved with Atheist <laughs> communities in the state. Yeah, yeah. It was a... <laughs> Organized yeah, Atheist. Big, not, uh, yeah. big, Big group camp out and um at the It's just a bunch of debauchery and people just chatting. That's all it is. It's a little yeah, it's a it's little column a, it's a column little bit of bit of bit of both. Drinking uh, There's a lot of drinking that's Yeah, all. the the last day we were we were there. Uh we got a we got a visit from uh, you know, another very large group that we were sharing the campground with. Yeah. Uh and it, it turns out it was a branch of the of the Kingston the, King, group. the Kingstons. Yeah. And uh we we actually wound up a you know decent group of us. Yeah. All you know standing around together uh having interesting conversations with them. Having a rap battle. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. Kind of. A little bit. A little bit. It Why was, don't you believe this? Why what's going on with that? You know. There were there were some interesting conversations. Um, there were plenty of there were plenty of people that were not afraid to say the Kingstons, huh? So, do you guys you guys you guys do you know <laughs> rattle off the things? And they're like, uh, some parts of our family do, but you know we don't <laughs> really like to talk too much about that. <laughs> Just kind of a thing as um people do. <laughs> like, okay, well, let's not let's not get into that then. <laughs> right, right now in the woods. Yeah. <laughs> let's talk about other things. And they're like, well, no. I was like, we don't want to. I don't, I can't even remember like. <laughs> who who right. specifically it was. Right. Um you know, not too bad. Not too bad people. Yeah, I not, mean not probably not relatively too, decent human being yeah, kind of thing. Not but it's also a, you know, just we let's avoid talking about this shit because right. it's gonna make a weird But weekend. it was also like really, really <laughs> weird because like because we had a flag. Like we we got to the campground where they put out a flag and we're like, ha ha also, you know, one because <laughs> that's how people coming up will going to find us yeah but they saw the flag and they're like let's go say hi <laughs> let's go talk uh, to these like, atheists we're like why the fuck are you why are you talking to us we didn't want to talk to, to you <laughs> like all right i guess we are having a conversation with the polygamists <laughs> But okay. But like, but like what do yeah. what do they gonna think's like, gonna happen? You know, atheists usually reach the end of where they're at after many years of insight right. and thinking about a lot of the stuff. Not saying all of them. There are some mm-hmm. shitty atheists out there. Yeah. But I'm saying for the most part, the people that grew up within a religion mm-hmm. did a lot of self reflecting before right. coming to this conclusion. What the fuck is a is a right. polygamous cult going to say 
to somebody who's reached the end of that. <laughs> it was just to very, make you change your mind. You oh, know? and it was very, very because they weren't like coming up to go. Let us share the good news. <laughs> it was more of a let's talk about how alcohol destroys families. Like more of like a we saw your flag and we thought it was interesting and we wanted to say hi. Wow. Brandishing weapons. <laughs> no, I'm just no, they weren't. It was like, no, no, no. I'm, was, I'm just saying that it was a like it was a family. Like they had like weird kids running around. I, I mean, three headed kids. Like, 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 I understand why the kids were running in circles and into the walls and trees and stuff. Yeah, it makes but, more sense now. <laughs> it makes total sense now. I mean, at first I thought they were just like normal kids, but then I paid attention to my kids, and they totally didn't do that. They didn't <laughs> run into stuff, so that makes more sense now. But it was more, I don't know, like, wow, we don't see other people that aren't, you know, in the group. Mm -hmm. We were like, wow. They, like, we felt like we were at a fucking zoo or something, like exotic people. Let's look, look at the Whoa. weirdos. <laughs> and then it turned out to be like, a whole bunch of us. You guys that hate were Mormons? Willing, very we willing, hate Mormons we too. We were very willing to look at them and say like, we don't give a shit if you guys do the whole polygamy thing or bigamy thing. Yeah. Like, as long as it's... A adults consenting, consenting, you know? Consenting adults yeah, and, and... And nobody being know, pressured into like, it, you know? Not, like, cousins or anything. Yeah. Like, because... Like, but even that, we're like, look, probably shouldn't have kids together, but you guys want to, like, fuck your cousins if you're adults. That's, that's use why, protection. That's why I, I found can't it really funny. say that's like I found it funny bad, but this cool. week, like Doctor Oz mm -hmm. got like fucking internet notoriety about saying this stuff, and yeah. I'm like, I'm like, honestly, guys, why the fuck do you care who's doing what to whom? As long as like if they're having kids, yeah, that could be a potential problem. Yeah, but I'm just saying, like, beyond first well, cousins, it's a it's little bit harder for like birth defects to roll in. You know, a little bit, but also like the things he was saying. Uh, I didn't pay attention to everything. Oh I just no, saw, but, oh. it's it's weird, weird. Oh okay, it's weird, creepy, weird. Has to be expected from the the guy that was hawking all kinds it's of weird, bullshit, creepy, so. weird talking about people and smells and the smells of people. Oh no, and that's the oh no, like. <laughs> My daughter's not attracted to me because she doesn't like the way I smell kind of thing. Uh, like, uh, I'm telling you, <laughs> it would go weird. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's, I mean, it's... I'm not defending Dr. <laughs> Oz to begin with. I'm just saying that people find weird things to get fucking hung up on. It, Marrying yeah. second cousins is not something you should be that fucking worried about. And people not fucking, worried, as long but... as they're not having kids, I don't think there should be hardly any limit. <laughs> like, it's... Uh, as long as it's it gets, consensual. <laughs> yeah. Uh, consensual adults and... It could be as weird and icky as you want it to be, but it's just like, well, I, my place is not between their that P and V. You know, that's, that's where yeah. I don't belong there. So... Yeah. Do whatever the fuck there you're going to do. Yeah, there's a point, and, and it's... Like, I only... Uh, it's so fucking weird and it's terrible and, and this is like, not a soapbox I'm willing to die on I know it is totally guys. not like, <laughs> like dude if, if you and your cousin being sex positive wanna go means have, that like, want to go have want to have kids I like that's not a nice thing to do to the kids you shouldn't like it, <laughs> you really shouldn't <laughs> you really really shouldn't you also shouldn't be marrying your half sister but, uh, <laughs> and but, first cousins as well, and also, having a brood of children. Right, but also, <laughs> like, just genetically speaking, they could be fine. Yeah, you could do the Mendelbrot set on that one. <laughs> like it's like it's it's not the too Mendelbrot unusual, or, but also, who did the peas with the dominant Mendel? Mendel. Greg, Mendel. Gregor, Mendel. Gregor, Gregor Mendel. Mendel. Okay, yeah. sorry. Mm -hmm. Thinking of a fucking Jonathan Colton song. Right. My bad. <laughs> like it's it it's not un it's not unheard of and and it's So let's get off the topic of cousin please, fucking. For the love <laughs> Moving of God, on. Can we get off the topic? <laughs> Everybody's like, I'm not watching this anymore. We got more people watching now though. That's weird. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all are some dirty people. <laughs> we, we we are and and have no desire to do 
anything with first, second, third, fourth, or fifth cousins. I don't. I haven't hung around cousins long enough, nor do I think any of them are pretty. <laughs> you know, it's like I. It's just that they would never have crossed my mind. I don't. I don't hang around them because I was the pretty one, so they were always <laughs> like. Hey, let and me I suck like, your dick. No. <laughs> they were hey, and I was no, and got weird. God damn it! I'm trying to get off this topic. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, with that being said, guys, come on! You don't want to hear about my big Mormon family? <laughs> we could. And their weird proclivities. They didn't get as bad as these guys, though. Because <laughs> we, c- man, there's no shortage of weirdo families we could talk about on the show. <laughs> so. I just kind of got a bug up my ass and wanted to talk about these guys this week because it's been one of those things where it's like, it's so weird that this is literally in my backyard. You know, yeah. I'm sure I live around some Kingstons. With how many there are? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I'm sure I have visited some of these businesses that they currently own. You know, I don't go to very many pawn shops, but like they have a, a printing and copying place. And I'm like, I'm pretty sure I got t-shirts made there one time. There are plenty that, that we have done business with. Yep. So. Yes. All right. Before we leave for the week, uh, let's give people their homework that way they should really be looking into. You got anything people should be watching, reading, playing? Uh, watch the Ring of Power, Lord of the Rings show. Yeah. It's actually really good. Um, Watch it. You're you're going to want to go back and like rewatch. It's dense. It is it is <laughs> it is lore and history dense. So I heard somebody make a comment like, "You guys think this show's bad? We had to grow up with the Cimmerellian. <laughs> <You know? laughs> <laughs> At least you got some good shit." <laughs> like we wanted to know what happened, we had to fucking read the similar. That's <laughs> man, that's a dry read. Oh my god! That's like some of the the. Like the later on Dune books. I'm like, this is boring. <laughs> uh, give me the Wikipedia. Yeah, I need what? to read. Give me the plot. What happens? Give me the, give me the, give me the outline. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Please somebody do the hard work and break this down for me. Thank you. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Watch that. Uh, Cause one, it's good. And two, it's pissing people off. <laughs> And that's always good. Man. Right. And then Love and Thunder is, is out on the, the Disney Plus. Go watch that. Go watch it. Even though people be, think it's stupid and they don't like it. Give it a shot. It was a whole it was a whole lot of fun. And and better than people gave it credit for. Is it silly? Absolutely. Absolutely silly. It's a fucking court story. It's it's a story told by what did you think of his lover <laughs> that had the mustache? <laughs> oh, that was that was his name was Brent or something. I can't Dwayne. remember. Dwayne is what it was. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, and we held hands. <laughs> That's how serious the film was. That is how serious it was. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ! Fucking fat, fat Zeus was just just icing on the cake for me, man. That was just. He's like, we are going to talk about the orgies. And I'm like, fuck, they're saying this in front of my kids. (laughs) (laughs) Dad, what's an Uh, orgy? (laughs) It makes me glad that I've got that my oldest kid is is old enough. Totally ace. Yeah. Totally ace. (laughs) That shit comes up and they're just gross. Yeah. Like that's all it is. Like, ew. <laughs> so you could probably show them they, they uh, turn, they get to hero gasm, and they'd be like, ah. <laughs> they, get to turn, they get to turn around and go, why the fuck is there so much hetero fucking and sex everywhere? Like, I can't get away from it. <laughs> you fucking heteros. <laughs> you breeders. <laughs> <laughs> fucking cis het people shoving it in my face. I don't want it. <laughs> That's wild. I can't. I, it's beautiful. That's why I can't. I can't comprehend being ace because for me it is a prime driving factor in mm-hmm. my everyday yeah. existence, man. Mm-hmm. Like, look at my wife, Kevin. Mm-hmm. No. <laughs> 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 yeah, good movie. Go check it out. Um, I'm playing, and I, this has been thing that's just been consuming my entire life. I went from playing it for like four hours this past week and up until over 23 hours into the game. 
and showing no time, no sign of slowing down. The game I'm talking about, of course, is uh, Destiny 2, which is basically a sequel for Destiny 1, but not really. It's just the same game, just, you know, shinier. <laughs> mm-hmm. And uh, there's a fucking... This game is not made for the people that have not played it before. So I jumped in both feet not knowing nothing. <laughs> and apparently, like, there were hours long expansions that they vaulted. So, like, you can't get them anymore. So, that you have to read, like, a Wikipedia to get the fucking lore. I watched a video that was three hours long telling the backstory of from when everything in the universe started in this game to the point where it was in the first DLC that I could play. This game has a long fucking history. And it's fascinating. And it's it's great to listen to because it's just like, there's a lot. What, what is it tied into? It's it's not tied into anything. It's its own story. But it, okay. But like, just from the story of itself, like, there, the history of this game and the sci-fi universe exists before Earth. Like, when we were still fucking apes, you know, or even mm-hmm. before then. Like, basically what, what happens in the game is that a couple of thousand, a couple of hundred thousand, I don't know what it is. Humanity at the point that they are in the story are evolved and there are places within the solar system now that have been terraformed and stuff. Right. With the assistance of exotechnology from an alien like spacecraft that doesn't have anybody manning it, but it just happened to like help habitate all these places that they were at and gave us the technology to where we could travel all these places. Anyway. I've put 20-something hours into this game. Every piece of DLC that I've paid for, I I bought, like, three of them on Steam for, like, 40 bucks because it's free to play. You can play for hours just for free. But I started getting some of the DLC and season passes and stuff like that, and it's fucking consumed me entirely, you know? (laughs) And it's made by Bungie, so the the mechanics of the game are fucking fantastic. Like, the gunplay is fun as shit. There's platforming. In a first-person shooter, which is just, like, really good platforming. And it's just, it's wild because it's it's very pretty to look at. It's got a good atmosphere. The music is really fucking well done. And it's like, it's like playing a multiple, multiple hours long Halo, you know, without it being a fascist future government. You know? <laughs> so, and also your character's not necessarily main character syndrome that you get, like, there's other people that were heroes before you, and there's going to be lots of people after you that are going to be heroes. And so it's, and I've never played an MMO before. So it's interesting just getting teamed up with randos when you're doing like fire team missions and stuff, or you walking around certain areas and other people come in to pi- give you fire support when you're just walking around in the main world and stuff. And it's just like, that's pretty fucking cool, man. Like some dude from who knows fucking where <laughs> is just coming along and just firing and helping me fight this guy. They beat it, get the loot, and they fuck off, you know? And I'm just like, hey, thanks for the help, man. (laughs) Because this this is fucking hard. (laughs) But the great thing is, like, the more you play, the better drops you get, of course. The better weapons, better armor you get, the more you you can level up all that shit. And there's not really a character that you, starting off the game, can't fight as someone that's been playing the game for thousands of hours. Because they they have it curved in a way so that It does the damage it needs to do based on whoever it is. So you can play with, like, guys that are fucking brand new, even though you've been at this forever, like, on the same missions and stuff, you know? So it's it's good. It's all based on skill, not so much on luck or having to be, uh, having the best gear on the planet. So Hmm. it's fun. It's it's a lot of fucking fun. I didn't think I would enjoy enjoy it as much as I have, but now that I've got a good grasp on what the fuck is happening in the story, because like I said... It's not new user friendly, <laughs> but once you finally get a grasp on what the fuck is going on, fascinating story, and it's just run and gun. It's fun. I'm loving the shit out of it. All right. So, interesting. Okay. It's like Borderlands if it had a story. Yeah. <laughs> I love Borderlands too, but. Never. Oh, did. man. That's a fun game. <laughs> anyway, that's all I got. That's my homework. Go play uh, Go play Destiny 2. Find me a Mr. Excremento, even though I have a lady character that I play. <laughs> <laughs> Probably confused. Wait a minute. <laughs> no, she would be called Mr. Excremento as well. <laughs> but you could play different classes and shit. There's, it's like your typical MMO. You got magic users. You yeah. got guys that can, like, long-range fighters. And I've just picked a brawler. Brawler tank kind of person because I suck. <laughs> <laughs> 
That's I don't. That's why I don't play MMOs. I, right. I can't. I don't, I don't like multiplayer games so much. I, what I like about it is I don't have to talk to any of these assholes. You can you can have group chats and stuff and talk yeah. with them with headphones in. I don't. You don't have to because it tells you where you need to go and what you need to shoot. So <laughs> there's <laughs> there's not much thinking to it. So good times i spent way too much fucking time this week playing it hopefully if we get out of here soon enough i'm gonna play it for a little bit when i get home <laughs> well i mean you're the one, I, you're because, the one captain i know because ship. i because i gotta i gotta move all these files from one computer to another and when you record at 1080 with 60 yeah. frames a second there's big fucking files man so take some time i'll be doing that later tonight anyway um that's all we got thanks to everyone for your your support we do appreciate it uh you can always shoot us an email or a text uh, three four seven six six nine three three seven seven, or you can uh shoot us an email mailbag at utahoutcast dot com. Did I say this is is this three ninety six or three ninety five? I don't know. I think this is three ninety six because it we, could did, be we did three ninety six. We did three ninety five last week because it's the same, it's because I said we got five more episodes until four hundred. Sure, it's three ninety six. Where we, we go. the four hundredth episode where we quit? You know, yeah. <laughs> where it's like okay, we're done. Have a good have a good life, everybody. Let's get Utah Outcast. <laughs> Fuck all this. No. <laughs> <laughs> not specifically anyway guys that's it we're out of here have a good week everyone remember everyone you're welcome good night everybody and get fucked <laughs>